Hi, everybody. Welcome. And uh, today we're going to be talking with George Georgiev. He is the owner of Gina Consulting, and uh, he's also a chapter leader with the AAPC, the American Academy of Professional Coders. And uh, he's with us here from uh, Schaumburg, Illinois. Uh, George yeah. purchased a business program from a, uh, another medical billing business opportunity in the industry, and he's here to uh, give us his feedback. So welcome, George. Glad to have you on the call today. Glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Absolutely. Wonderful to have you on. Um, so we'll just jump right in here and, uh, you know, get to talking about, you know, what got you interested in the medical billing business to begin with? And uh, did you have previous experience in the industry? All right. Uh, no, I did not have any previous experience. And when I started my search um, into opening my own business, medical billing simply checked a lot of boxes for me like uh, being able to work from home, being able to scale this. And I was really looking for a B2B um, opportunity where uh, instead of a business to customer or B2C was not what I wanted to go with. Um, so that's, um, that's what really got me interested, the potential to scale and uh, just the industry potential is really what interested me. Okay. Okay. So, uh, what was the company that you decided you ended up, uh, you know, going with, and you know, what kind of attracted to you them uh, attracted you to them most? Right. Um, I ended up uh, after doing a lot of research. I ended up uh, signing up with ABS, which is American Business Systems, out of uh, the Dallas area, and um, they attracted me through uh, several webinars, conversations, um, you know, presentations, and. Uh, they were offering a complete training for medical billing, a complete training and support uh, to become a medical billing company. So um, what really attracted me was that this was going to be the whole package. And, um, you know, I was, uh, the training was going to be uh, live, which is something that I now realize um, didn't work out the way I imagined. Yeah. Yeah. So that, you know, providing you a turnkey system, that was, you know, an attractive piece to it that everything was, you know, kind of provided for you all in one shot there. Yeah. So when looking into the business, um, how long did you spend, you know, evaluating ABS before purchasing? And did you feel, did you feel you did the due diligence necessary to make an educated and informed decision with it? I certainly felt that I did uh, quite a bit of due diligence and, uh, you know, I have to pass, uh, um, you know, all this information by my uh, uh, fiance. So if she doesn't approve it, uh, I can't go right. forward. <laughs> That's right. That's right. I had to do quite a bit of research and she kept pushing me to go back and look into this, you know, find, find the negative, mm -hmm. you know, find a reason not to do it and uh, not to go with this company. And I, I started my search in um, November of 2017 and I ended up signing a contract with American Business Systems in February and going through training in March. In that time, I was working with a, a franchise consultant and uh, I did quite a bit of research on different companies. And uh, ultimately, I ended up with ABS because I felt they offered uh, the best solution for what I was looking for at the time. I didn't want to go with a franchise because uh, after uh, looking at all the contracts, the 500 plus page contracts, um, I realized how restrictive that was. Mm -hmm. And um, I, at the time, I really liked that ABS had like a two or three page contract. Um, and it wasn't a franchise contract, it wasn't restrictive. Now uh, I've come to realize that that to some extent is a negative. You know, a lot of the, um, a lot is missing because uh, that contract is very uh, short and vague. Gotcha. So maybe a lot of what you were told, you know, on a phone or maybe heard on a webinar uh, yeah. that they said they would do wasn't actually in the contract. So that kind of left you lacking there a little bit. And one of the things that really uh, sold me, so to speak, is uh, in uh, one of my conversations with them, I literally asked, like, what is it that you look for as a quality of somebody that uh, you're going to sign up as a licensee? And they said, you know, we used to. Uh, disqualify people and say you're not a good fit but we don't do that anymore because we've had people from all walks of life be successful with us 
-hmm. I said, okay, well, I am kind of that person. I'm in a completely different industry. I, um, I haven't really done any B2B sales. Uh, and it really felt like, okay, this is somewhere I can fit into. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so what, what were you doing? You mentioned you came from a different background. What, what did you do prior to uh, getting started with this? Prior to going to medical billing, I uh, was working in a transportation company, a trucking company mm -hmm. in the area. And uh, that's, uh, that's completely different. I, right. I have to deal with a different set of people. I was in a management role. Mm -hmm. um, however, it's still a very different industry than healthcare. And that certainly doesn't play to my advantage. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's great. And I appreciate that feedback. Um, so, you know, as you um, went through and, you know, evaluated, uh, you know, American business systems, did you feel they explained their, their broker or, or business relationship with you honestly with integrity up front? Or do you feel like, you know, you were misled in any way? And if so, how do you feel they might have misrepresented themselves? I do feel that they misrepresented a lot of the information because, um, during our phone calls and uh, webinars and even demonstrations of their system, they keep saying our system, our system, you know, it's a complete system. It's our system. And then when you end up going to the training, the training is all about the vendors that they put together. So it, you quickly realize this is none of this is their system. None of it is proprietary to them. And you're going to have to work with a bunch of different companies to deliver each service that you're now going to offer. And okay. not only that, uh, it also means that, you know, their, their support is only extends so far. Like half of the support is through American business systems and the rest you have to go through a vendor and that can get real tricky. Yeah. You kind of get that push and pull back and forth yeah. from, from one uh, vendor to another. Know, this, vendor. Is, uh, this is their fault. And you know, it's not, it's not us as them and you get that back and forth. Right. Yeah, that can be tricky and that can be tough, you know, especially, you know, if you have, uh, you know, a, a variety of different services, if it's not just one or two companies, but it's, you know, 12 different companies that you're having to communicate with based on what you need, that yeah. can get pretty tricky, I imagine. Yes, it can. And uh, it can cause delays and uh, ultimately loss of business. Right, right. So um, how about on the billing side of the training? You know, um, what, are you, what are your thoughts on the, the billing training that you received? Do you feel like they prepared you to become a successful medical biller? You know, and if not, what do you think was lacking maybe from that billing training that you received uh, from the outside training that you decided to go and, and take on your own? So again, um, during my conversations before training, I was told, we're going to give you everything uh, walking out of the training. You're going to know everything you need to know in order to run this uh, business and be provide medical building services. Um, during the training, we received about maybe an hour or two of actual billing training and just covered some terminology, some general uh, terms, how things flow in a revenue cycle. And uh, then um, we spent some time on uh, actually working in the EHR vendor software just entering information and even that was not a complete training the training was just about the vendors and about the marketing it's here's our vendors and here's how you can market them it was never about the billing itself and ultimately if you're building a medical billing company you need to be able to bill and you need to have that knowledge in order to start having conversations with potential clients what i quickly found out and uh, walking out, I maybe a month or not even a month in, I uh, visited my own physician and he agreed to have a quick conversation with me. And I started explaining like, how, you know, um, about some of the services that I offer and said, hold on, what do you know about coding? What do you know about billing? What do you know about this? And you quickly realize that. I didn't get trained on any of this. I don't know any about anything about this. I know that I have a vendor for it, but other than that, and even with having a vendor, you, um, you're not giving a whole lot of information about that vendor. It's just how to market them. So now you have to go out, go out and figure out how each vendor works, what their setup process is, what the ins and outs are and why they may be better than other services. And sometimes they're not, sometimes they're not. I've come to um, 
uh, on the medical billing side, actually, I ended up going and saying, I need more knowledge. Mm -hmm. I, I have to learn more. I have to know more in order to have uh, a really consultative conversation uh, with potential clients. So I signed up with an AAPC okay. and uh, I ended up being certified by them as a CPP. Uh, yeah. um, other than that, I also ended up doing a lot of comparison research. Mm -hmm. into these vendors and saying like, okay, this is, um, you know, this is a service this vendor offers. How does it compare to what others are offering out there or what offices already have in place? And what I kept finding out is either, you know, this is, uh, the services were not proprietary. They weren't offering anything new, which is kind of what ABS kept saying. This is nobody offers the service like we do or like this vendor does. And uh, your price point is going to be better. And that's simply not true in any of these cases. Wow. You're, really? uh, yeah, I know that you, you have one specific team. example that you had talked about um, to us on the credentialing side that kind of blew you away when, when yeah. looking at the pricing um, and, uh, you know, and, and comparing that, you know, with different companies. So, um, you know, it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's tough, you know, you could have a, a great service, but if it's, uh, you know, if it's overpriced for the market, it's going to be a hard time to get that into any um, practice. Well, if you want to do, if you really want to build a medical billing company and do consultative sales and really be a help to the clients and not just suck them dry for money, right. you the price point isn't what you want to be um, comparing yourself on. But when you're, priced over competition, then it becomes a problem to uh, approach that topic. Right. Yeah. You, you lose a little bit of that competitive advantage. You know, you might be talking about having a better service, but if you're way overpriced, uh, you know, compared to others in the industry, it, again, it just makes that, that, that uh, sale a whole lot harder, um, you know, setting up and in, in that working relationship. So, mm -hmm. um, so on top of, uh, you know, the training, we'll go back to the training a little bit. So how about the marketing side of the training? Because you said they did spend a lot of the time in the marketing. Um, did they prepare you, you know, thoroughly to market yourself successful to acquire the billing accounts? Um, At this point, I would say no, because um, in the training, you go through different marketing techniques and I can't go into detail on that. But... Uh, what I've come to find out is these are more suggestions than their actual plans of action. You know, uh, after you're done with the training, um, they give you access to a um, licensee website and you have the same like a recording of the marketing training sessions that you can go through and it's just the same information over and over, but it doesn't really prepare you to do the marketing. What you find out after you get done is well, now I have to go and spend more money on each one of these uh, potential marketing techniques. And while they, in training, they're gonna try to tell you like, there's ways to do this for free, mm -hmm. which is true if you don't want results right away. If you wanna spend years with potentially nothing, yeah, you could try the free way, yes. Um, it's just not a complete marketing system. And what I've come to find out is, you can go through, you know, a business coaching, get the same information for a lot less money. And it might be, it's probably going to be, you know, much more actionable than what you're going to get from ABS. Gotcha. Gotcha. So, you know, what do you think it, uh, what was it with the marketing that, you know, kind of, or, or maybe it's not necessarily the marketing. Maybe it could be the products that, you know, had you continuing uh, to fail, uh, you know, even when you had doctors that, you know, you might be talking to um, and you had that engagement with them, what was it that you felt, you know, kept having you kind of hit that brick wall and, and, and fail to uh, acquire the client? Well, um, I'll start with from the marketing side. Um, it's, um, it's, I think it's considered basically most of the techniques are considered um, inbound marketing. Um, so you're waiting on people to come to you. And uh, that becomes a problem because if you don't have a book of business, if you don't have potential leads already going into the training, you end up with dead zones and you're just sitting in 
kind of nothing is happening. Um, the other thing is, you, if you spend this much money on the system, you would expect it to deliver more results or more potential, and it just doesn't. Um, from a point of why did this fail for me, um, on several occasions, I was able to get to uh, a contract signing stage with several potential clients. Um, what I found... Uh, what I found out is uh, because I have to work with only the ABS vendors in order to offer these services, um, and it's not you're not really um, a billing service. You're kind of a you become essentially a reseller for their vendor, and the only way you can offer the billing services through their uh, EHR vendor, through their EMR vendor. Um, that becomes a problem because now you have to take on additional cost. Um, in order to sign up a client, there's upfront cost, there's a subscription cost, which is common with EHRs. Um, in addition to that, in certain specialties, uh, they're more perceptive to outsourcing their billing services. Um, the, the vendor pricing that uh, you're able to offer is not competitive at all. And that became a problem for me. That yeah. really became a problem uh, with uh, certain specialties and uh, actual contract signings. I uh, uh, I was able to get to. Uh, so essentially, I lost out on uh, several clients that you know I could have had if I was able to offer the services in a different way. You know, right. So maybe so maybe you know if they didn't have to buy that software or adopt yeah. that system, you could have you could have worked with them, but you needed a system that. Could have been, uh, you know, priced at a uh, for you um, that would make it affordable, so you could take on that account, you know, and, and absorb that cost. But you know, two sixty a month might be a little high to absorb. You you know, know, you're only getting that small right now. Oh, sorry to interrupt. Uh, in their marketing and um, uh, well, in, in their webinars, what ABS says is uh, one of the uh, the potential earnings are represented but they're represented from a perspective of uh, certain specialties that kind of have higher revenues so if you get to those specialties, yes you can have that potential but uh, if you have a client that has lower revenue that potential is diminished and now their systems become really expensive for that client and not a good solution um, right. if, they're not, if the doctor isn't generating as much money you don't really have the shot to be able to work with them because your costs are too high Right, right. In addition to that, what I found in my marketing, um, and then um, uh, one of the ways you, you're going to have to market this is through networking, whether uh, it's business networking or you know through close friends or an existing book of business. This is true for any business you start. It's not just ABS, but networking is a great way to, to promote a business. And uh, what I found in my marketing efforts through networking is I was having to say no to more referrals than uh, having the ability to say yes. And that is because um, uh, because of the ABS vendors, they uh, only work with a certain list of specialties. And when you look at that initially and you don't have any uh, medical billing experience, you say, oh, this is a pretty long list. Um, and you know they they kind of hype it up in the training. This is you know there's so many specialties that you can work with. Well, you quickly uh, you're going to quickly realize that there are also a lot that you can't work with. And for me, dental has been one of those specialties. Um, and I have asked them multiple occasions, and usually the response is either you know we don't service dental flat out, or you know our EHR vendor is working on a solution for dental, but it's not up and running yet, and that's. You know, I've asked, I don't know, three, four or five times over the two years that I've been with them. And the answer is kind of the same. So, you know, how long does it take to put together this uh, system or to add this option? Uh, you know, the, that has been a, a big struggle for me because in networking, I've most of the people I've met and built a relationship with, uh, they said, I know a good dentist. I can really, I can make a really good introduction for you to a dentist. And 
what ABS is going to tell you uh, if you ask them about dental in their um, initial presentations before you sign up, they're going to say there's no money in dental. You know, there's enough. Uh, you're going to be able. You're not going to need dental. Well, you know what? If you look at medical billing and the medical specialties, what you're going to quickly realize is in medical, there's a lot of hospitals, there's a lot of ACOs, there's a lot of large groups, and you're not going to be able to work with those. So uh, in medical, you might be able to work with one out of five practices. And not only that, you're only going to be able to work with a certain uh, group of specialties that their EHR vendor services. So it's even less than one in five. Maybe it's like one in four out of the practice or uh, it's the other way around. It's, uh, it's less. Right. What that means is when you compare that to dental, dental has a much higher percent of practices that are private. Mm -hmm. And you're, you're only able to work with private practices and medical with ABS. If you're able to do dental, that's a huge market. That yeah. is a huge market. A absolutely. Absolutely. And as well as, you know, opening up the doors, you know, not just for the dental, but, you know, larger facilities, you know, with, uh, you know, a better software yeah. system that does bill on the UBO4 claim form. You know, you can yes. work with hospitals, urgent cares, you know, um, DME companies, home health care agencies that. Yes, those are also um and some introductions that i've missed out on because i wasn't able to build on a ub04 and uh the system that or the vendor that abs offers does not handle ub04 uh does not handle facility charges and that is not going to change now just to soften the blow there that's actually true of most ehr vendors out there mm -hmm. Um, most vendors focus on just doctor's offices, outpatient billing, and they don't handle facility charges because that, that gets quite complicated. Uh, but if you are able to offer both, you expand your potential significantly. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, dental on top of that, that's, you know. Yeah. I, I mean, you, like you said, you know, it just, it really is opening doors, you know, opening more doors, uh, uh, giving you the ability to say yes. When people are asking you, can you do this? Can you do it this way? Can you do it that way? You know, the ability to say yes, keeps that conversation going. And yeah, the more and you get a chance to build that rapport, the better you're going to have a shot at getting the business. Absolutely. And especially when you're a new business, um, you want to be able to say yes to a potential client rather than, Oh, I'm sorry. Um, this is not actually, something I can handle. Right. Now I've heard business coaches and you know, motivational speakers say, you know, it's a, a good way of building businesses by saying no more, more of the time, but as a new business that doesn't apply, you want to be able to say yes. When you have a book of business already, when you have some clients behind you, that's when you can start saying yes and being picky. Or I mean, no, and being yeah, exactly no, and being picky, exactly, yeah. and then exactly, then you, then you can work with who you want. But in the beginning stages, you know, you really want to work with anybody that uh, you know is going to give you the opportunity to to prove yourself to them, because you know that's where we are in the beginning stages. You know, we want to we want to really be practice problem solvers, helping those doctors and being able to say yes, I can solve that problem or this problem over here. You just let me know what you want me to focus on first. That's absolutely true. So. Um, what would you say was there maybe your first red flag that you noticed, uh, you know, after joining up and kind of going through the training process or going out there and maybe start marketing? Um, what do you think kind of jumped out at you, uh, out at you first of, of saying, ooh, maybe, you know, this might not be the best uh, direction to go? Yeah, well, the first red flag was actually talking to my own physician and realizing how little I actually learned in the training. And then uh, from there on, um, I had already started a process of, you know, doing uh, more education on my own. But what started happening is I was staying in touch with the other licensees that were part of that training class. And I uh, kept researching. I found other licensees and other licensees found me through LinkedIn, Facebook, um, and social media in general. And uh, I was... I was reaching out to licensees that were successful to find out, you know, how did this work for you? What did you do? And I was reaching out to, and I was being reached out to uh, by licensees that were saying, you know what, I, I've been with this for six months, a year, a year and a half, and nothing's happening. Like I'm doing this, I'm doing that, and it's not working. And that was like, 
you know what? At first I was saying, maybe you're just not doing it right. You're not doing it enough. And I was just pushing myself to do more and more and, um, you know, spend a little bit more money here, you know, do this uh, kind of marketing, try this, you know, just keep trying. Right. And I've never given up. Uh, I've never given up uh, in my efforts, but it kept being a red flag for me that, you know, as time went on, not only was I being contacted but, uh, by other licensees saying this is not working, you know, that there's so much red tape. Um, I was also find uh, I kept finding, uh, researching ABS and finding reviews online that kept popping up and saying like other people that I hadn't talked to, they were saying it's not working. This is not what it, I was sold. Um, and everybody had different uh, sort of different reasons, but overall, it's the fact that you know um, you're not able to, you're not actually um, able to represent ABS. Like the part of the contract is you can't use our name, you know, so you're signing up to be a, somebody's licensee and you can't use their name. And they tell you that's because you, we want you to market your own company, but it's really because uh, you're not, a, you're not licensed to use any of their services really their and their services are not theirs uh, It's the vendors. So you're not, you, you don't have a license with their vendors. The other thing that I kept finding out is, because you're working with a set of different vendors, uh, these vendors are also your competition. You know, right. Just because um, you know, you're an ABS licensee, there is no non-compete for them to not go after the same client you're trying to go after. Right. So the, it becomes even harder. Yeah. Yeah, that's tough. Yeah. That stuff, you know, if you're, if, you know, you're, you have a, 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 an opportunity to acquire a client and, you know, you have the same company, you know, they're going to provide that service for you competing against it. You know, obviously they could probably charge less than you would need to charge through them. You know, and you're being told you have preferred uh, licensee pricing. And in some cases that's true, but who's to say that, you know, that company isn't going to negotiate its pricing with a potential client. Directly. They're, yeah. they're not going to negotiate it with you. Uh, and the other thing that really uh, was a red flag um, in the contract, and at the time I didn't think much of it, uh, at the, uh, in the contract there's a no resale clause. So you're not able to sell this license to anybody. Uh, furthermore, if you want to uh, sell your business, a potential business buyer, let's say you have five clients and now you built this business and you're looking to sell it and move into something else. Well, for um, your potential buyer to actually buy the business, they also have to buy another ABS license at the current price, which means that they have to, uh, that's the training and support license so that they can be a licensee and, and use the same services and transfer. Now, the reason for that is because ABS is selling training and support none of the software or uh, services are actually theirs. Right. So you're not, you can't resell something that's not yours. Correct. Yeah. Right. So even if you have clients, um, you're not licensed to, uh, it's not something you can resell. The license is an additional cost that you're going to have to uh, tack onto your, your business sale. Yeah, so there's no real exit plan for you if in the future you decide, hey, you know, I want to be able to sell this business and retire. Yeah. You're, you're kind of it's stuck. It's not working, you know, trying to get you recoup some money by selling it. It's not going to work. Yeah. There's that's, no option that's, here. Yeah, that's so, tough. That's yeah. tough. Um, so, you know, obviously you're doing this to help a lot of people, you know, understand what, what you've experienced and what you went through to, to help individuals, you know, not make the same mistakes as you did, um, or at least to be aware, you know, going into it um, so, so they can make a more educated decision. So what do you think that people would need to know um, before they sign on the dotted line with ABS? What, what would you, you know, suggest that they know? Um, what would you want to prepare them for that you haven't maybe told them so far? Well, um, there's a lot of things I could say about this, but uh, first of all, if you're going to go into this and then you don't have a book of business, you don't have uh, previous sales experience to rely upon, and you've done, never done any marketing, be prepared because this is going to be um, 
Herculean effort on your part and it may not yield any results because just the ABS training and support alone will not get you there. Most of the licensees that have been successful that I've talked to either had a family member, friend, relative that is somehow involved in a private practice and that was their way in or had extensive sales experience or were just naturally really good at that or again were able to rely on a book of business so those are things to think about if you don't have a pool of potential leads to go to right after training it is going to be extremely hard for you to build that yeah yeah i think one of the things that you didn't mention there is that you know they're already previous medical billers and probably the reason being is because i think a lot of medical billers can because they've had that experience, they can see the pitfalls with, you know, the systems and some of the other things where they know that they need that, you know, they need the claim forms, they need to be able to work maybe with multiple clearing houses or, or, or uh, uh, you know, you bill for different types of, every type of provider so they have the opportunity to take the business. I mean, the, these might be, you know, some of the reasons why they don't have a lot of uh, seasoned billers joining up, but more salespeople because, you know, that's more of the focus of their business is the sales and marketing side over the actual operations of the business. Yeah, and something else I will tell you is go out and do some research, talk to different companies, talk to some, find some EHRs out there and just talk to them, you know, get a, talk to their sales team, find out a little bit of information about it and um, maybe go to, go visit your AAPC's local chapter. Um, there's gonna be professional builders, professional coders that are doing this on a daily basis. Some of them are business owners like myself, mm -hmm. and they will tell you how they got started. Um, I don't know many builders or coders that went with ABS. No big deal. Um, I, I think that once they see it, they realize that this is you don't need any of this to really start a business. Now, if, uh, if you have the experience, obviously there's other ways about it. Uh, but if you need the training, I think that um, and this is not a sales pitch, but Cleantech does provide um, better training in my um, opinion. Just the fact that they will provide you with the uh, training manuals, with the code books. ABS will not give you a code books. And um, you know, having that medical billing training is very important. Yeah. Yeah. We, I mean, we provide, uh, you know, all our code books are in our code review software system to allow you to perform actually code reviews for doctors or dentists. Um, and you know, all the codes are built into there. So one of the nice things you don't have to flip through the paper pages on our code books, you can just well, click, you know, you can just type it in and it'll automatically generate the codes for your type. It is, um, tell you what that's a nice feature, but it is nice to have the books and actually know what other builders are working with. And yes, most builders work with some, some type of software and that does the coding for them or a professional coder, but knowing how the book looks and being able to, you know, identify the, um, the system and work with that book, find the code through it. Right. Uh, it's a skill in itself and it will be helpful for you. Uh, there's modifiers in there, denial codes, uh, you know, just a lot of great information that you're not going to get through ABS. Yeah. So that, that brings me up to one thing, cause I know what our, you know, billers do when somebody's looking at, you know, uh, talking to a doctor just for the very first time. One of the things that we do, you know, is we'll prepare somebody for an example, if you're going to go talk to a chiropractor, what are the codes that a chiropractor uses? What are the modifiers that use? We're providing this information to a person ahead of time before they even go into that practice to meet that doctor with for the first time, because it helps them to get a better knowledge base of who they're talking to, what's going to be important to that particular doctor as far as their billing requirements are going to go, you know, because billing for different doctors is of course different. You know, you're billing for a chiropractor, you're going to have some different processes than if you're billing for an anesthesiologist or a durable medical equipment company for example so we're helping to kind of prep and prepare individuals before the even the very first meeting about one of the some of the specifics of that billing and then when you're actually onboarding the clients you're getting that focused billing training on exactly how to bill for each new specialty that you sign up so I definitely see that as a as a big benefit what would you say were, would maybe be some of the other benefits you see you know that you're gonna have advantages uh, with claim tech that maybe you didn't have with with ABS well, 
the ability to say yes to more uh, potential business uh, would be great. Having a little bit better training. At this point, I have a lot of knowledge already because I went out on my own and uh, learned a lot. Uh, but having additional training can uh, you know, be very beneficial. And just being able to not only say yes, but also say, you know what, I don't need you to you know, get my EHR, I don't need you to buy into this uh, subscription cost and this initial upfront cost. Uh, I can work with, you know, any doctor's office the way, the way that they want to work. You know, a lot of these doctor's offices uh, have already went through this uh, process of selecting an EHR and, you know, if they're looking for somebody to do their billing, that doesn't mean that they want to change and revamp their whole operation. In some cases, it's good to do so, but sometimes they're just looking for somebody to take the billing and move it out of their office so they don't have to think about it. Yep. That doesn't mean that uh, you have to change all their systems altogether. You could seriously benefit them by simply literally taking it out of their office and you know, doing it uh, for them. Right. Yeah. I mean, even, even still, you know, if you have a doctor, they might not be looking for you to take over all their billing to start with. They might just be looking for you to follow up on their, you know, past due denials that their current operation couldn't get done and are just, you know, sitting in the, uh, you know, in the uh, back office collecting dust or, you know, getting ready to expire because of timely filing. That's something where we can step in and we can just take what they need us to take and manage what they need us to manage. And then when we can come back and we can prove ourselves by collecting that old past due debt that their current operation failed to collect, now all of a sudden we're creating that relationship, we're building that trust because they see, hey, we were able to do this, what else do you think we can do to help you, you know, solve some problems and maybe clean out some additional clutter in the office you know, that you can't get to right now? And that can be a great way to get your foot in the door and then you know, inch your way in, whereas if it has to be an all or nothing, you know, you're not going to have as many doors stay open for you. Right. That's absolutely so, true. Um, well, George, I greatly appreciate, you know, your, your time today. And I, I know everybody that's listening to this, um, you know, and looking into this business appreciates, you know, your feedback and your honesty. Um, is there anything that you wanted to, you know, leave, leave the, uh, you know, billing community with here? Um, I think we covered a lot. Um, I did want to touch up on uh, the actual ABS support because uh, they do, support is there for you. Uh, they do answer. Um, you do have to email, you can just call in, but uh, they will always get back to you. Um, however, remember that they are going to be limited to in what they can do from a standpoint of, you know, this is you know, something you need to talk to, uh, to our vendors about. And, um, you know, they're just limited in what they can do. Uh, there's, there are great people there, uh, some very nice folks, but sometimes that's just not enough. Right. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, George. We, we appreciate you and, uh, you know, look forward to helping you build and grow, you know, a very successful business with Claim Tech. Mm -hmm. So thank you all for joining in and listening to today's call. We hope you appreciate uh, all that, you know, information and we look forward to uh, talking with you soon. It was uh, all helpful and uh, I hope that uh, it will make some, uh, it will allow people to make a better educated decision. I'm sure it will, George. I'm sure it will. So thanks again. You have a great day. We'll talk soon.